Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me today. I am thirsty is the title of this devotion and really I'm saying this from Isaiah 55 which I also mentioned to you yesterday in the devotion, that chapter. It's really a phenomenal chapter. If you have time, just read that whole chapter for a moment and you'll see how much God is longing to bring you into a place where He quenches your every thirst and satisfies your deepest longing with the knowledge of Himself, with the glory of His Holy Spirit's power. But He says here in Isaiah 55 verse 1, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come and buy and eat, in other words, invest. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. In other words, I paid for it already for you. Why do you spend money for what's not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Oh, praise the Lord. The Lord wants to make an everlasting covenant with us through Jesus. The sure mercies of David indeed I have given him as a witness to the people a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you, you shall run, you shall run, mm, you shall run to you. Uh, okay, I, I wrote that. And nations who, who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. It's really quite powerful. In other words, the, I am ready to give you the same mercies that you see in King David's life, how nations came, submitted themselves to him to receive the blessing of the Lord through him. And nations he didn't even know would come and submit to him. He says, the nations will also come running to you to receive what I've given you, is what the Lord's saying, nations. I mean, he says this in Psalm 126, your mouth shall be filled with laughter and your tongue with singing, and the nations will call you blessed. People in other countries are gonna be talking about what God has given you. That's what he's saying. And that is what happens when he is allowed to quench your thirst when He is the one who is allowed to be your satisfaction and your absolute contentment. You know, the Bible says in, what is it, Second Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, verse 6, that contentment and godliness is great gain. Contentment with godliness is great gain. In other words, you find I'm complete, lacking nothing, wanting nothing in your communion with the Lord. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed, fortunate, happy, and spiritually prosperous in the state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, and right standing for God, with God, for they shall be completely satisfied. Come on. I find this for myself a phenomenal armor. I have to live in this armor or the devil constantly comes around and tries to deceive me because I have some want or need or desire that isn't satisfied running around in me looking, no, 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 I don't want to live this way. I don't want to live for the pleasure of the moment. I'm not an easel. I live for the glory of my Heavenly Father, and in Him I am complete, lacking nothing, wanting nothing. I am fully satisfied. Come on, I'm going to read you these words of Jesus again in Matthew 5, verse 6. Blessed, fortunate, happy, and spiritually prosperous in the state in which the born-again child of God enjoys the Heavenly Father's favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, right standing with God, for they shall be completely 
satisfied, completely satisfied. Again, Isaiah 55, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come and buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for what's not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Oh, God is beckoning you and me into that place of sufficiency with him. I'm preaching on this on the Wednesdays, if you can join me on the Wednesday nights. I, I call it the secret place, but it's really where God establishes you and holds you steady in his sufficiency. And I pray in Jesus' name, come on, let God be the one who quenches your thirst. Bring all your thirsts into him. Oh, David, you may say, Pastor, I don't really understand that. I, I don't practically know what I should do. Well, this is why we have the scripture where others have gone before us to show us the way. And David, and the Lord says, I'm ready to give the same mercy you see in David. So let's see that mercy God gave to David. Oh God, you are my God, Psalm 63. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there's no water to me, the world is a dry and thirsty land. Sure, you can go and eat something somewhere. You can enjoy the sunshine, you can enjoy the views, you can enjoy the birds and creation and, and, and sweet companionship and fellowship and all of these things have their place and, and, and really they all are beautiful through God. But real satisfaction, friends, real satisfaction is only found through our communion with our loving Heavenly Father. You see, it says in Isaiah 40, verse 6, a voice says, cry, prophesy. And I said, well, what shall I cry? And the voice answered, proclaim, all flesh is as frail as grass, and all that makes it attractive, its kindness, its goodwill, its mercy from God, its glory and comeliness, however good, is transistory, like the flower of the field. All the beauty of this temporal life is just a passing, uh, what did Solomon call it, grasping for the wind. It's not, it's not eternal, it's just temporal because we're on our way to our home in heaven with our Heavenly Father. But you see what is the secret of, of having your thirst quenched is to be satisfied in God and that He is the one who satisfies you. And I mean physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, sexually. If you think that by having all the sex that you could gather yourself to, you will find full satisfaction, you'll find it like anything else. It's like people who just eat and eat and eat to find satisfaction in life and then end up paying painful prices by being overweight and, and suffering all kinds of challenges physically because their bodies weren't made for that. Food is for the body, but we're not to live for food. Amen, I eat to live, but I don't live to eat. No, and the same is true with physical gratification in the sexual relationship, even within marriage that needs to be within the borders of, of God's gracious love and goodness and not boundless or, or, limit or in this unrestrained lust that, that causes you to only be selfish in your motivation. That is not how God has ordained the physical relationship, not even for a married couple. But you see, if you don't find satisfaction in God, you don't understand any of this. You think I'm crazy. You think, what do you mean, man? I mean, give me just more sex or give me just more food or give me just more money and just give me this. And then I'll be happy and it's not true, is it? Come on now, let's be honest. It's not true, is it? It's not true. Real lasting satisfaction doesn't come through these things. David, he says in Psalm 17, he says, the wicked, they have their reward. Their belly is full of food. 
But my reward is when I see the Lord, all is well, and I wake up in His likeness. You see, real satisfaction does not come through the entertainment of self, but through the fellowship with our loving Heavenly Father and finding true satisfaction in what we were created for, and that is to share in the glory of God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why I want to encourage you today, let the Lord quench your thirst. Jesus said, if you believe in me, put all your trust in me, I'll see to it you'll never thirst again. I've always see to it that you will be satisfied in your fellowship with the Father. I will see to it because even as the living Father sent me and I live because of him, so he who feeds on me or she who feeds on me will live because of me. You'll find this in John 6, verse 35 and, 6 and 57. Oh, my prakosha, Father, I prando supremegesha. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's presence that you bring us into that utter satisfaction that you quench our deepest thirst and that we feel so happy and content, Lord. We feel so happy and content and satisfied and that we long to live in this righteousness with you where you satisfy us completely in yourself and that we can be a source of your love and blessing to everyone around us in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day, everybody.